Hello Booktube! Welcome to Lizzie Faye Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. Well, it's Friday evening and I kind of like to make this a Friday Reads, but if I don't get this edited in a timely fashion, then we'll just call it my weekly wrap-up. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do a Friday Reads or a weekly wrap-up every week, but I've already finished three books this year and I'm well into a couple more, so I thought I ought to try to at least make a stab at doing weekly wrap-ups so that the my video so that my wrap up at the end of the month is not so huge. And then at the end of the month I can show you everything I read and just kind of refer you back to these videos where I'll talk about each book a little bit more in depth. So I'm having a really great reading week this week. I started out the week with a book that I was supposed to have read in December because it was my December book club book for my book club at the public library and it's Mistletoe Promise by Richard Paul Evans. Tis the season for Richard Paul Evans. He's well known for his Christmas themed books. So I've enjoyed several of his books, but I tell you, it seems like Richard Paul Evans can't just let his characters have a nice fluffy romance. He's got to strike them with some sort of horrific tragedy and it's just heartbreaking. And the books that I have been reading this past week are no different. Each of these books have wonderful characters that just get struck down with horrible tragedies. But of course, I guess if you didn't have that in a book, then it would be pretty boring. It was just a really great book. I gave it five stars. About a man and woman who are each used to spending Christmas alone. And you find out as you go along because of some horrible things that have happened in their past. And so they've each just kind of resigned themselves to being alone, but they see each other in the work cafeteria and the guy happens to be a lawyer and so he draws up a contract and it's called the mistletoe promise and he makes her a deal that you know he says he's tired of being alone and doing all this stuff alone so if she would agree to it he would pay for everything if she would go to his work parties with him and he could go with her to her parties and they would do some stuff together and just so they wouldn't have to be alone and then the contract would end on Christmas Eve and they could go about their separate ways. So she decides to do it and it's just really a cute premise. I just think it's really fun and I would definitely recommend that you read it. The story's great. Of course, as I said, it's wrought with tragedy but, you know, of course in these type of books it all works itself out in the end and it's wonderful so I think you should pick it up. And since I enjoyed that one so much I went ahead and started The Mistletoe Inn. This is the second book in this collection. It's called The Mistletoe Collection. According to Goodreads they're all standalone books but there are three of them. The third one is The Mistletoe Secret and I haven't gotten it yet but I have it ordered at the library and I want to go ahead and just finish reading this trilogy because I really really enjoyed the first one and I'm hoping that the other two are going to be equally good. This one I've just read a little Bit of it's about a writer who goes to a writing retreat and that's about as far as I've gotten so I'll let you know about it next week. So after I finished Mistletoe Promise I picked up Christmas in Harmony by Philip Gully. This was just a little tiny book less than a hundred pages but it really packed a big story. It was just so fun so great. I loved it. If you have not read any of the Harmony series I recommend that you start with Home to Harmony it's fabulous. Now people compare Home to Harmony with At Home in Mitford and I would make that comparison. And there are a few parallels. It's about a minister and his congregation and there's a lot of quirky characters but that's about as far as it goes. The books go off in different directions but they're just so cute. So if you are interested in the series I would definitely recommend starting with Home to Harmony then the next one is Just Shy of Harmony and then Christmas in Harmony is 2.5. So it's just a little novella that um, is tucked in the middle of there between books two and three and I don't really think that it's necessary to read this one to continue on with the series. But I do think you should read at least the first book before you would look at Christmas in Harmony because it doesn't really give you the backstory of the characters. You need to kind of already know a little bit about the characters in order to appreciate the humor in this book and it is humorous. If you know these characters then this book is so much fun. On my phone I listened to another Richard Paul Evans book called The Letter. This is the third book in the Christmas Box series. This is a sequel to the prequel <laughs> in the Christmas Box series. In the Christmas Box there is an elderly woman named Mary Ann and so 
the, uh, and so time piece takes us back to her and her husband's meeting and them getting married and uh, the tragedies and things that happen in their lives when they are newly married and in their first in their first few years of marriage then the letter goes forward in their lives and it takes place I think after they've been married maybe 15 or 20 years and the uh, things that are happening in their lives at that point so this is a sequel to the prequel and it like other Richard Paul Evans books was wrought with tragedies and you know these people just can't catch a break but it really is a good story uh, you know there are heartwarming times and there are heartbreaking times and I, I thought the series overall was a very enjoyable series to read so now I can say I have finished a series already in the first week of 2017 and the other book I've been working on this week is The Plains of Passage by Jean M. Owl. I have this on Playaway from the library, which is just a little MP3 player that I can carry around in my pocket. I am not quite halfway through. I am on, I'm somewhere around page 300, and it's a 700-page book. And I didn't actually listen to any of this today. I've been working pretty hard on this one and going pretty strong. But today, I kind of took a little break from it. And I started my book club book for January, which is Cold Sassy Tree by Olive Ann Burns. I've listened to about the first hour of this on audio on my phone. And um, I'm listening to it through Hoopla, which is through the library. And I am enjoying it a lot. It is historical fiction. It starts out in the summer of 1906 in a town called Cold Sassy, Georgia. And so I'm really enjoying it a lot. It is narrated by a young boy who is 14 at this time. Will Tweedy is the narrator. And he's talking about how his grandmother has passed away just three weeks prior. And so his grandfather has just come in and made an announcement to the family that his he means no disrespect to his wife, but he is going to get married again. And they're horrified because it's only been three weeks, and they're thinking he's still not going to get married for, you know, another year. But he goes that day and gets married, and that's about where I got to. So I think this is going to be a really fun book. I am super excited to read it. I've heard really great things about this book. It's been around a while. It was originally published in 1984. I have been interested in reading it for a while. And before I even had a chance to suggest this book as one of our possible book club selections, another member from our book club suggested it and said that he had read it before, but he really thought this was something that everybody would enjoy reading. And I chimed in. I said, oh, yeah, that, I've been wanting to read that. So everyone else agreed, and we put it on our 2017 list. And this is our January book. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I've already enjoyed the first hour immensely. So those are the books that I finished or spent a little bit of time in so far this week. So what am I reading going forward? Well, of course, I'm still going to keep working on The Plains of Passage and Cold Sassy Tree. Those are the main two larger books that I'm working on. But I will admit, I really enjoy mixing in a few shorter books in amongst my bigger books and being able to have that sense of accomplishment of still being able to check books off my list. So, and there are several smaller books on my TBR, and so I will be, you know, continuing to read some shorter things mixed in among the two bigger ones. Now, I already mentioned The Mistletoe Inn. I actually started this just a little bit. Then I forgot to take it with me a couple of times, and so I didn't get very far on it. But today, because I forgot to take it with me, I started a book on my Kindle. It's a book called Pauper to Pedigree, and it's by Angel M. She's an author and book blogger. Um, we follow each other on Twitter, and sometimes she comments to some of my videos, and, and I kept seeing her book cover on her Twitter feed, and so I downloaded it to my Kindle back before Thanksgiving, before I went on my Thanksgiving trip, I believe, or maybe it was my October trip. I can't remember. Anyway, I downloaded it before one of my trips to Oklahoma, and I just hadn't gotten around to reading it. So, because today I was subbing, and I had a little time, and I did not have any of my print books with me, but I had my Kindle. So, I pulled that up, and I read a couple of chapters, and it's really cute. It is about a girl who has a mobile pet grooming business, and there's also a little bit of a Dr. Doolittle quality about it because she can understand and talk to animals. So I think it's going to be really fun, and I am really excited about it. I did not realize going into it that it was going to have that magical realism kind of um, 
theme to it. So I am really excited about reading it. And then I also am going to pick up The Titan's Curse, the graphic novel. Katie has all three of these checked out from the library and I mentioned it in my January TBR video but I couldn't lay my hands actually on the book but I just found it today under the couch. <laughs> she had been reading it and then it got laid on the floor and slipped under the couch. So I have it now and I definitely want to get it read this week. And I also have a few other books that I want to add to my January TBR that I hope to get to. So Katie reminded me that I had made her a promise that when the first of the year rolled around and I was done with all my last year's challenges that I would read something that she wanted me to read. And she's been wanting me to read Alive by Scott Sigler and its sequel, A Light. There's a third book in this series that's coming out later this year, but for now, this is what we have. She has read both of these and really, really enjoyed them and has been wanting me to read them. She has read the first two chapters out loud to me in the car while I was driving. That's how much she wants me to read them, and she does not read out loud. So I know that these are really important for me to read. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue this this week. I, I don't know how far I'll get, but I do want to go ahead and try to get both of these read this month. And something else she wants me to get busy on is the fourth Harry Potter book. I don't, I didn't pull it out, but um, probably I'll go ahead and read these first, and then I will get with the business of the next Harry Potter book as well. And then a couple of things I forgot to mention on my January TBR video. One of the books I got for Christmas is Fanny Flagg's new book, The Whole Town's Talking, and I really want to get to this as quick as possible. So I'm going to keep this towards the top of the stack and hope that I can get to this. I have read like a little bit of the first chapter, but I haven't gotten very far in it to really know what's happening. And so I am excited to get to this. I have been waiting for this book since I think May is when I first heard that it was coming out. So I am really thrilled to have it. And then something else I forgot to mention is um, Sarah from Novel Expectations is doing a Shakespeare read-along for 2017. And she's not going to try to read all of Shakespeare, but she, she's picked out six comedies and six tragedies, and she's put them all in a TBR jar, and each month she's drawing one out, and she invited people to join her. Well, I've not read a lot of Shakespeare. Now, where I grew up in Oklahoma, my county seat town is a town called Durant. They have Southeastern Oklahoma State University, and for many years, I want to say they may have started in the 70s, they started in the 70s or 80s having a Shakespeare festival every summer. And so we used to go and watch a lot of those, and I've seen a lot of Shakespeare plays, but I had not really ever sat down and just read any of them to my recollection. Maybe little excerpts of some in school, but to just sit down and read one just for the fun of it, I have not. So I'm going to attempt to do this with her. So the play she drew out for January is A Midsummer Night's Dream. I have seen this play. I really enjoyed it, so I am looking forward to reading it this month. So that's kind of what I'm reading right now. So I have finished three books within the first week of January, and I've taken a big chunk out of this chunker and got started on my book club book. So I think it's a pretty good reading week so far, and I hope that I can continue this reading streak that I've been on for the last year and a half and get a lot of books read this year. I am going to do a separate goals video, but I will tell you that my main goal for 2017 is to read my bookshelves. And I've got way more on my bookshelves than I can get read in one year, but I really want to make the majority of the books I read come from my own shelves. But for now, that's what I'm reading. I hope to have some more videos out very soon. Hopefully a Saturday shelfie each week and I will have my wrap up of what I read in the Pop Sugar Ultimate Reading Challenge coming up very soon, at least the first half of that. I've got those books lined up ready to go. And then my goals and my, my year interview for 2016 and my goals for 2017. So I've got several videos to do. I hope to get those out as quickly as possible. And that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.